For the first day of WWDC 2016, Apple took the wraps off of a new version of iOS. And now that we've got this beta preview loaded on a phone, let's take a quick tour of what's new in iOS 10. This is a pretty substantial update, looking at streamlining the user interface while expanding functionality. Services are key, and a lot of attention has been paid to those interactions. Starting off with the lock screen, the complaint that Touch ID was too fast has been addressed with a gesture. Picking an iPhone up will now light up the screen. Holding an iPhone in your hand prompts the screen pretty aggressively. It's a bit twitchy, but at least it doesn't seem to activate as readily when in a pants pocket. New from the lock screen is an easy way to interact with the camera and widgets. A slide to the left delivers quick bite-sized pieces of info you might be interested in, or the ability to write out messages and replies without having to transfer to a full app. A slide to the right is the new quick launch for the camera, which works a bit easier than the old camera icon swipe from previous versions of iOS. Once in your home screens, you'll quickly see a new control center when sliding up from the bottom of the screen. It's a clean layout, though it would still be nice to have a bit more info here, like detailing which Wi-Fi network you're connected to. And sliding to the side here, you get a dedicated control area for Apple Music. And later, once HomeKit is integrated, you'll be able to control internet-connected devices in your house from here as well. Alerts can be cleared from your notification tray with a force press, but once you push in, it will clear the notification. We can't find any way to back out and preserve the notification once the pressure pop has been completed. When typing, Siri Learning Intelligence is now being applied, and the keyboard will offer smarter suggestions over time, including better support for phrases and full replies. This information will tie into location data, so when asked, where are you, you can organically reply with map information with one button press. Photos gets an overhaul. The app better organizes individual photos and videos, categorizing selfies, panoramas, and slow motion videos. The app will also sort by date and location. This app will scan for numerous subjects, facial recognition, animals, and scenery. Filtering and scanning happens on device, so searches should happen quickly when looking for specific shots. New for this Photos app, Memories will automatically sort photos by trips, date, people, or topics and the app will pool those photos and videos together to create short, shareable movies. The new Maps app adds the ability to pan and zoom during navigation, and adds traffic information to the mix. The entire interface has been improved for delivering info on restaurants and other points of interest. As developers support this update, we'll also have direct integration with third-party apps. You'll be able to find a restaurant, reserve a table, and schedule an Uber, all without leaving the Maps app. The music app is all new and also receives a major overhaul, focusing on really easy navigation. Big bold categories help move you around what you're currently playing, browse, and radio tabs make content discovery more fun to explore, and here you can find cultivated playlists from famous people. There is an option for displaying lyrics, but if most of your music collection was CD ripped or acquired from another service, not only will you not have access to lyrics, you probably won't even get album art. News also gets a touch-up following the style of music, but focused on a magazine layout for top stories. Uh, subscriptions to popular outlets like Time or The Wall Street Journal will show up in this feed, alongside cultivated stories from traditional periodicals and web resources. Now, Messages gets a massive makeover and was maybe the most focused on service during the WWDC keynote. Rich links display content directly in feed, providing the ability to watch video directly from a chat or share an Apple Music link directly within this interface. Ascending Photos seamlessly integrates the camera app into the chat interface, even giving you a live preview from the photo options. And you can convey tone now with options for individual message modes like loud and quiet, or play it coy with some invisible ink, or you can blow up the whole screen with balloons or a laser light show. Emoji are bigger, and as mentioned before, the keyboard is proactive in serving picture options up for you while you're typing. And for that personal touch, you can just write something on the screen if you want to do that too. It's a big, playful update for people who like to communicate through iMessage. Updates to the phone app were a little bit more subtle. Voicemail transcription will be coming to the iPhone, but we currently have issues setting up a voice mailbox, and the new phone app will also better integrate with third-party services like Skype to provide an interface for VOIP calls that looks more like regular calling. 
Lastly, Apple discussed a new approach for HomeKit, where one app on an iPhone will be able to interact with equipment from several different manufacturers, with support baked right in from the companies involved in home construction. We'll have more to show on this once this feature is better supported, but it's a tantalizing early glimpse into home automation with an easy hub approach from a single app on your phone, which can interact directly with Siri for automated and voice controls. It's a big step for Apple. This iOS update brings a lot of functionality to the table, catches Apple up in a couple of key areas, and polishes up the look of a few services which were falling behind. For a beta, it's currently running well on both an iPhone 6S and iPhone SE, though the latter obviously lacks support for some of the 3D touch gestures, and some options in messaging are achieved through long presses rather than peaks and pops. We'd still caution against using beta software on a mission-critical daily driver phone, but this is already shaping up to be a solid update for the Apple ecosystem. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for our full coverage of iOS 10 and hit that thumbs up button for a little extra positive reinforcement. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. You can chat me up on Twitter and Instagram as some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.